Congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers. But it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look! I found it! Yeah. Uh, uh, hey! What's going on? That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh! Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah! I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go! Class! So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're gonna knock over yours. Take that! Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. No, get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. And how do they move? Only one square per move and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Uh -huh. Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, it. Forward. Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward. Uh -huh. Next, I'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pawn, and once more, go forward. Gra Grampus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen, get back here. In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> now come.
come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pod for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. Oh, you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius in a checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa who's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They have three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The stain. Tom Thomas, what's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf portrait. It's called a self portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like this superhero I see here on this paper? Uh, how can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas, your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. <laughs> Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it. What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea! We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah! That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? <sighs> Any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is. Cheerful and kind. Ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula 
will believe anything you tell her. Which is really great, because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt, and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle, and a line over there. Splendid! That looks great! And how about down there? Wow! It's like fireworks! Splendid! There's a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, oh, my little artist. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true. So I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared! Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too! That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it. And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh. Write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to?
too. We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the flag. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let Knots. <gasps> no, look, there are pirates off the starboard side. <gasps> Battery, fire. Hey, I'm not a pirate. Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack. I got it. That's done. Good enough. It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. <gasps> Whoa! 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 Our treasure! It sunk into the sea. That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now, to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. Oh! Okay. I knew I could tie it. Now what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. 
I know it because I'd counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's gonna notice right away that the red one's gone. I gotta go find it. Yeah, I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing, sorry. And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you wanna know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. That way, I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Yusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The globe. Ready? Set? Go! <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh. Again, I couldn't do it. I told you, there's just no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <sighs> now you can't throw me off. Spin it! Go on. Whoa! <laughs> what you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball, but the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? <laughs> The planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. 
Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here, and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me. And night for me over here. Ah, my side got dark again. And for me, it's a new day. All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> The Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. The Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there, while at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik. Nolik, where are you? Sure, somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it. You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it. Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you were sure I was gonna fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolik, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! Uh, you gotta help me. Don't leave me. Should we help him? But the pull of chewing gum is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. I almost caught one yesterday, a chased in the body flat. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, it's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let The disguise. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, why do you need a second aquarium? Especially without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. 
Have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? Do you see him? No, he's not gonna let us catch him. We're gonna have to, to trick him into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly gonna come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm gonna get you. Hey, we gotta help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. all the time. They use nets that look like bushes, paint their tanks in colors that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The pen.
Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you going to do with the red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat, there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behaved badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, 
How Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix, it, please don't let their secret out. Nolix Q. Whoop! <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? <laughs> the Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. <laughs> That's nothing. Hey, Tom Thomas, how long have you been messing around cube already. It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. Ugh. Like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. No, I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What, you can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great, I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Simka could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, Lake, you better hurry, because Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this. We did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. 
Simka, Nolik, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao! Woohoo! Wow, you really solved it. It was Nolik. Nolik, you are cool. So how? You see, first you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all huh? back together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now it's a Nolix Cube, right? <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the astronaut training center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late. And the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off. But he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part broke down. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the path. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tom Thomas, Tidish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. Nolan, follow me. 
Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> we barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then we put the part back into the computer and it started Again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Marcia and I have pulled out half those parts already. for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, my motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. Ah! Six, nothing! 
Oh, it's a blowout. Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. And here's what we're gonna do. We got it! Attack and check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. get creamed like that. Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team. Team! team. Hockey, hockey.